so today we are going to be speaking about the infamous Charles Manson. So Charles Manson was born in 1934 in Cincinnati, Ohio. His mother was Kathleen Maddox. She was 16 when she had him and she was unmarried. So his father was Colonel Walker Henderson Scott Sr. But he wasn't an actual colonel. He worked at the local mills and he was a con artist as well. So when Kathleen told him that she was pregnant, he said he needed to leave for the army, but obviously this wasn't true because he wasn't a real colonel. After a few months of him being gone, she realised that actually he wasn't coming back. So sometime later, she married William Eugene Manson. However, they divorced in 1937. Manson divorced her um, and the reason he gave for this was uh, gross neglect of duty. He said that Maddox kept going out with her brother and getting drunk and leaving Charles with babysitters which he found unacceptable while he was at work. So then Maddox and Charles moved to Indianapolis and Maddox attended uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or AA if you like um, and she met a man called Lewis at the AA meetings and so they got married in 1943. So Manson played truant a lot at school and he began stealing. In 1947, Maddox wanted to put him into foster care, so she tried to find an appropriate foster home for him. However, she said that she couldn't find any that was suitable enough for him and his needs. So he was sent to Gibbalt School for boys in Indiana. This was a school for male delinquents run by Catholic priests. He spent Christmas in 1947 at his aunt and uncle's where he was caught stealing a gun. He returned to school and ran away 10 months later. He burgled stores at night and he rented a room. He was caught stealing and sent to juvenile facility in Omaha in Nebraska. Four days later, Manson and another student, Nielsen, stole a car. He got a gun and he robbed a grocery store with Nielsen and a casino. So then they went to Nielsen's uncle's house in Illinois. His uncle was a professional thief and so he took Charles and Nielsen on as apprentices. So Manson was arrested after another robbery and was sent at 13 to strict reform school. So he later claimed that he was raped by other students and that this was encouraged by staff. He said he developed the insane game as a way to defend himself as he wasn't very physically strong. So he said that he would act insane, stare people out and smile really creepily and give them waves. Um, and he said that this was the insane game and this is what he played to make people think he was insane and so that they wouldn't approach him. And apparently it worked. So he escaped with two others in 1951. They stole a car and were headed for California. However, they got arrested in Utah. So Manson was then sent to Washington DC's National Training School for Boys. On arrival, he was given an aptitude test. He was found to be illiterate. However, his IQ was 109, which was good for the time as the average back then was around 100. So his caseworker actually deemed him extremely antisocial and said that it would be better if he did not interact with others. Manson transferred to Natural Bridge Honor Camp, which was a minimum security institution. And then in October 1951, he was transferred again on a psychiatrist recommendation. So he was then transferred to Federal Reformatory in Petersburg in Virginia. He was caught raping a boy at knife point and he also uh, committed eight other offences where he was. So then he was transferred again to a maximum security institute in Chillicothe in Ohio. He was expected for release after his 21st birthday, which is in November, was in November 1955. However, due to his good behaviour, he actually got released um, in 1954 in May. So upon his release date, he actually asked um, the board if he could stay because he said that prison felt like a home to him and he wasn't ready to be that out into society, basically. However, they refused and so he went to live with his aunt and his uncle. So in March, 
On March 21st, 1967, he had now spent more than half of his life in prison, so he was 32 at this point. And in the late 1960s, Manson attracted the quasi-communal cult. So the cult was based in California, and it was later named the Manson family. So the gang was involved in the murder of Gary Hinman in July of 1969. So Bobby Busoli... Susan Atkins, Mary Brunner, murdered him. Bobby stabbed him twice and wrote Piggy and drew a paw print on the wall in his living room in blood. So he did this because he wanted to make it look like the Black Panthers did it, who were an activist group at the time. Um, they also killed Sharon Tate and her house guests. So Sharon was two weeks away from giving birth. Um and she was stabbed 16 times. Five stab wounds were fatal. And Abigail Folger was at Sharon Tate's house. She was stabbed multiple times. She managed to escape after being stabbed multiple times and ran to the front yard screaming for help. However, a family member, Patricia Krenwinkel, she caught up to her and stabbed her. So then she asked for help from another family member, Tex Watson, because she was losing the fight. And so he came and helped her stab Abigail to death on the front lawn. So Wojciech Frykowski, he managed to free his hands after being tied up. This was also in Sharon Tate's house. So he was struggling with family member Susan Atkins and Susan managed to stab him four times in the legs. However, she realised she was losing this battle as well and asked Tex Watson to help her, who was the other family member. Watson hit Frykowski in the head with the butt end of a .22 Buntline revolver. He managed to make his way outside, screamed for help, and then Watson came and shot him twice and then continued to stab him. Stephen Parent was there by chance, complete chance, just wrong time, wrong wrong day, wrong place. He had a chance meeting with William Garretson, who was the caretaker who lived in an outhouse uh, quite a way away from the main house, so he didn't know any of this was going on. Um, so Parent wanted to try and sell Garretson a radio, so he went to visit him at the outhouse. Um, so when he got there, uh, Garretson showed no interest in buying the radio, so Parent went to leave. As he was in his car, he stopped to push the button on the gate, electronic gate, to open it. And as he rolled down his window, he saw a dark figure who screamed halt at him. So when that happens, you're obviously going to be a bit startled. So he looked at the man and saw that he had a knife and a gun. And it was Watson who shot him four times in rapid succession. So Jay Sebring was actually the first one to be killed in the house, uh, in the living room before the chaos started. So um, Tex Watson had tied a loop in a rope around Sebring's neck and then he looped it over a ceiling beam and then uh, tied like another loop and put it over Sharon Tate's neck as well. So they were basically joined by this really long rope. And then Tex Watson instructed them to lie down on their stomachs by the fire. So Sebring argued this point, saying that it would be really uncomfortable for Sharon to do this since she was eight and a half months pregnant. However, Tex Watson didn't take kindly to him speaking out and shot him without hesitation and then continued to kick him while he was bleeding out on the living room floor. So the next day, the Manson family went to the LaBianca's residence. So Manson was actually there and woke Leno LaBianca up at gunpoint and he said he was there to rob him and that no one would get hurt and asked if anyone else was in the house to which Leno said that his wife was upstairs. Manson left at this point and the family brought Rosemary down into the living room to be with her husband. So Leno LaBianca was found with 12 stab wounds, 7 fork wounds as well. So a knife was lodged in his throat and a carving fork was lodged in his stomach and somebody had carved the word war out of his stomach. Rosemary was found with multiple stab wounds to the neck and the chest 
and Death to Pigs and Rise were written in her blood on the living room walls and also Helter Skelter was written on the fridge in blood. So Helter Skelter actually came from the Beatles song of the same name. The term was used to describe impending apocalyptic race war in the Manson family's eyes. So another victim of the Manson family was Donald Shee. He worked at the Spawn Movie Ranch, which became the family's residence for a while. So on August 28th, 1969, the family members took Shee for a ride and Grogan struck Shee over the head with a pipe wrench. Then Tex Watson began stabbing him. The group took him out of the car and then stabbed him to death behind the Spawn's movie ranch. Rumours had ensued after this, uh, after the Manson family had been arrested, that he was actually cut into nine pieces and buried in different locations. However, this was disproved in 1977 when the body was finally found because Grogan, who had struck him with the pipe wrench, had drawn a map to show where he was buried and they found him in one piece. The Manson family were also responsible for other assaults, thefts, crimes and attempted assassination of a US president, Gerald Ford. So Manson was admitted to state prison from LA County. Uh, he carved a swastika into his forehead for the trial. On April 22nd, 1971, he was charged with seven counts of first degree murder and he was later also charged with two more accounts of first degree murder. In 1972, the death penalty was temporarily abolished as it was ruled uh, unconstitutional in California. And so Manson was resentenced to life in prison with, with chance of parole. Um, so he applied for parole in 1978 and it was rejected. So on September 25th, 1984, he was imprisoned in the California Medical Facility, and this was because a fellow inmate, John Holmstrom, he had poured paint thinner on Charles Manson and set him on fire, and he suffered second and third degree burns to 20% of his body as a result. Now, when asked why he did this, Holmstrom said that Manson had verbally threatened him and objected to his Hare Krishna chants. So in 1989, Manson was housed in a protective housing unit. So this is at California State Prison in Corcoran and it houses inmates whose safety will be compromised in normal society. So basically, if he got a normal house, it would probably be burnt down and he'd probably be murdered by victims' families or members of the general public. So it was safe for him to stay in this protective housing unit. So in June 1997, the Prison Disciplinary Committee found that Manson was trafficking drugs. So in August 1997, so only two months later, he was moved to Pelican Bay State Prison. In 2009, photos were released showing Manson for the first time since he'd been arrested. So nobody had really seen him since then unless they'd watched documentaries that the press had filmed. He now had a swastika tattooed on his forehead, so it was no longer carved. Um, in 2010, Manson was caught with a cell phone. He contacted multiple people in California, New Jersey, Florida and British Columbia. However, the California Department of Corrections said that they were unsure as to whether he'd used the phone for criminality or not. In 2012, he was denied release at his 12th parole hearing. He did not attend this meeting um, and he was denied another parole hearing until 2027. So that would have been 15 years later than his last parole hearing and he would have been aged 92 at that point. So on January 1st, 2017, so only last year, he suffered a gastrointestinal bleed and he received treatment for this at the hospital. On November 15th, 2017, so only a few months ago, he was sent to hospital as he was unwell. However, press were not allowed to know the reasons why he was unwell. And then he died four days later from a cardiac arrest, respiratory failure and colon cancer. So on March 12th, 2018, the court ruled that the body and assets would go to his grandson, Jason Freeman. 
So that's the end of Charles Manson. I will be doing another video on the uh, family members, the Charles Manson family members and go into a bit more detail. I will do that on Friday, so stay tuned for that one. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware of whenever I post a video. It's every Tuesday and Friday. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.